Hi, I'm Divya, a software engineer on the Open Health Stack team at Google Health. With Open Health Stack, our goal is to help accelerate the future of digital health by making it easier for developers everywhere to build next generation healthcare apps. Previously in this series, we introduced Android Fire SDK, a set of Kotlin libraries to help you build Android apps using the HL7 Fire standard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Fire workflow library to build applications that use decision support to generate care plans and evidence-based recommendations for guiding delivery of care. Before we start, it's worth noting that the workflow library is a Kotlin library you can add to the dependencies of your app. It is compiled into the APK and it's not a separate service running on the device or any backend. The workflow library builds on concepts found in the workflow module of the FHIR standard, as well as the Clinical Practice Guidelines, or CPG, implementation guide. If you are not familiar with them, please follow the links below to learn more about them. But don't worry, we will cover the basic concepts and use simple examples in this video. So let's get started. The workflow library makes it easier for developers to build healthcare applications that can be used for delivery of patient-centered care. The workflow library depends on the clinical reasoning libraries in Java. It also depends on Fire Engine to manage patient data on device, as well as the Knowledge Manager to manage knowledge artifacts. So it combines the clinical knowledge with patient data to either guide care, workflow API, or generate measurement, measure API. You can learn more about the Knowledge Manager library as part of this video series. See the links in the comments. The workflow library is designed to do two things. First, the generation of patient-centric care plans from published clinical guidelines and the subsequent execution of the care plan in the form of requests and events. This is handled by the Activities API. Second, the computation of clinical quality metrics defined as FHIR measures for in-app analytics. This is handled by the Measure API. With all these capabilities combined, the workflow library makes it easy to run computable guideline content, such as the WHO Smart Guideline packages. Let's first take a look at the Activities API. The Fire Workflow module defines three categories of resources related to workflows. The first category is resources that describe things that can be done, or definitions. Examples of frequently used definition resources include plan definitions, activity definitions, questionnaires, and measures. Next, we have requests, which are resources that describe things that are desired to be done for a specific patient or group. Care plans, communication requests, service requests, tasks, and medication requests are examples of requests. As an example, the plan definitions apply operation is used to generate these recommendations for the specific patient. The third category is events, which are resources that describe things that have been done, such as immunization, communication, condition, encounter, and episode of care. One of the goals of the workflow library is to simplify the implementation of this pattern. Now let's take a look at an example of how these three categories of resources work together. Let's start with an activity definition for immunization. This is a definitional resource that defines what should be done with regards to immunization for, say, measles. Combined with patient data, the activity definition is instantiated into an actual immunization request that needs to be acted upon by a healthcare provider. The request itself will go through three stages, namely proposal, plan, and order. And when the immunization is actually carried out, an immunization resource will be created to record the event. And this concludes the immunization workflow. Now, to better organize request and event resources, the care plan resource holds requests and events for a specific patient by a provider providing a patient-centric view. Plan definitions, activity definitions, and CQL libraries are generally authored by experts and are provided as part of an implementation guide, such as the WHO SMART guidelines. 
It's worth noting that the activity flow defined in the clinical practice guidelines is a bit more complicated. In particular, the request typically goes through three phases before the generation of an event. These include the proposal for performing a particular activity, the plan where the proposal is accepted or rejected, and the order where the plan is authorized by a qualified user to perform the activity. In addition to this, there are states defined at each phase of the life cycle that track the progress of the activity. The states that are typically available are draft, active, on hold, entered in error, revoked, and completed. However, please note that there may be exceptions. Some resources may support fewer or more states. You may take a look at the links provided to read more about the state diagrams defined for request and event resources. As you can see, the correct handling of relevant resources in the activity flow is complex and intricate. Luckily, the Activity API handles setting the correct states and references between these resources. Let's now set up the workflow library in your application and dive into the Activity API. First, the Fire workflow dependency needs to be added in the build file. To initialize the Fire operator, a Fire Engine instance needs to be created first. The instructions on how to do this are available in the Introduction to Fire Engine video. The Fire operator also has a dependency on the Knowledge Manager, which manages knowledge artifacts on the Android device. You may initialize it as shown using the application context. Now you may initialize the Fire Operator instance as shown using the Fire Context, the Fire Engine instance, and the Knowledge Manager instance. To apply a plan definition on a single patient, you may use the Generate Care Plan API as shown in the example. The plan definition URL and the patient ID are required for this operation. It is also important to ensure that 1. The patient resource and all other relevant resources to be evaluated through CQL logic are persisted in the Fire Engine's database. 2. All knowledge artifacts such as plan definitions, activity definitions, libraries, and so on are installed to the Knowledge Manager. This API effectively implements the apply operation on a plan definition to a patient as defined in the Fire specification. The result of this operation is a care plan proposal for the patient. Now that you have the activity proposals, use the Activities Flow APIs to take the proposal through plan, order, and perform stages. Let's return to the immunization example we showed earlier. In each stage transition, the API will handle the multiple request resources under the hood and persist them in the database on device. You can also update the resources using the update function. Now let's switch gears and take a look at the Measure API. As mentioned earlier during this video, the workflow library enables computation of clinical quality metrics for in-app analytics. This can be done using the Measure resource and the Fire Evaluate Measure operation. The Measure resource represents a structured computable definition of a health-related measure, such as a clinical quality measure, public health indicator, or population analytics measure. Quality measures are often derived from clinical guidelines and are designed to determine whether the appropriate care has been provided given a set of clinical criteria and an evidence base. A measure resource references a CQL library that contains the definitions of the calculation to be performed, that is, the numerator and denominator. The Fire Evaluate Measure operation takes in a measure and returns a measure report resource, which represents the result of calculating a measure for a specific subject or a group of subjects. To evaluate a measure defined in an implementation guide, the Evaluate Measure API may be used. A measure report is generated as a result of this operation. A measure may be calculated for an individual subject as shown in example 1 or a group of subjects as shown in example 2. Note the difference in the subject ID for each case. To recap, the workflow library provides powerful capabilities to allow developers to build workflow-enabled apps that leverage on-device decision support logic in CQL, 
compute fire measures for on-device analytics and indicators, together run authoritative content such as the WHO Smart Guidelines packages. To learn more about the workflow library's features, explore our website and the Android Fire SDK repository. To keep learning about how to build with OpenHealth Stack, check out the next video in our series. Thank you.